Hello everyone, I am Natalia Fardinova, a PhD student at the Department of Comparative Language Science at the University of Zurich. It's my pleasure to present to you our research on the impact of hearing impairment on neural patterns in spatial attention filtering, conducted in collaboration with the University of Lübeck. Before I delve into our project, I will briefly recap some important findings on auditory selective attention and hearing loss. Previous studies have demonstrated that neural alpha activity, ranging approximately between 8 and 12 Hz, is involved in auditory spatial attention. Specifically, it has been shown that oscillatory alpha power increases ipsilaterally in one hemisphere relative to the other and decreases contralaterally to the focus of spatial attention. In other words, we can say that um, alpha activity increases in brain region, irrelevant to the speech processing. Speaking about aging brain and hearing loss, attention-related alpha activity is diminished in older individuals as well as in individuals with hearing impairment. From our daily life experiences and studies on speech perception, we know that individuals with hearing loss often face challenges in noisy and crowded environments, especially when they need to focus on a specific voice of interest. However, the neural mechanisms affected by hearing loss remain unclear. The main objective of our study is to determine whether target selection, distracted suppression, or both of these neural subprocesses are affected in hearing impaired compared to normal hearing listeners. To address our main research question, we tested three groups of participants with varying ages and levels of hearing loss, um, young normal hearing, elderly normal hearing, and elderly with mild to moderate hearing impairment. The results of the pure tone audiometry can be seen um, on the plot on the left side. All participants were native German or Swiss German speakers with no history of psychiatric or neurological disease. We collect our data in collaboration with the University of Lübeck and um, apply the optional stopping rule to determine the sample size. The data collection is still ongoing um, and the results of this presentation are based on the data of 67 participants um, we uh, got so far. On the next slide, you can see the design of the auditory attention task that participants performed. At the beginning of each trial, participants were cued with white noise, followed by two simultaneously presented tone sequences. The stimuli were spatially decoupled and presented from uh, different directions. In selection uh, condition, the target was presented either from the left or from the right side with a fixed distractor on the front side and vice versa in a suppression condition. Participants were asked um, to detect whether the pitch of the target tone sequence was rising um, or falling. Along with participants' performance, the 64 channel EG data was collected. To quantify the impact of selection and suppression, the alpha modulation index was calculated for each condition across all subjects based on absolute oscillatory power. Each alpha modulation index was overaged across frequencies in the alpha band for the time interval from Q onset to the earliest tone sequence onset. 24 period occipital electrodes, uh, 12 on the left and 12 on the right hemisphere, were involved in the data analysis. Let's take a look at the results. This slide shows the top plots of alpha modulation index for selection and suppression across uh, participant groups. We observe similar alpha modulation patterns related to target selection and distractor suppression in each of the three um, hearing level groups. The next plot demonstrates the distribution of alpha modulation patterns by condition and hemisphere, again um, across all participant groups, according to the results of the three-way ANOVA analysis 
the alpha modulation index is significantly influenced by the hemisphere factor and um, the two-way interaction between condition and um, hemisphere. However, the three-way interaction of condition, hemisphere and group doesn't show um, any significant effects at the usual p-level. In conclusion, I would like to briefly summarize the main results of our research. We found that alpha oscillations implement distractor suppression independently of target selection, not only in young normal hearing individuals, but also in older individuals with and without hearing loss. Additionally, we observed that alpha power increases contralaterally and decreases ipsilaterally in the relation um, to the target. In contrast, it increases contralaterally and decreases ipsilaterally in relation to the distractor. Our next steps include further analysis to address outstanding questions. First, we aim to determine whether alpha lateralization predicts performance at a single trial level. And second, we plan to investigate if changes in alpha modulation patterns are mirrored in gaze movements during the auditory attention task. That's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to your questions and goodbye.